Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that hath breath praise him. And to God's servant, Dr. Energy and Dr. Becky Energy, you are welcome to Kenya, the land of the living. Kenya, Kenya the nest. I said Kenya the nest. Where God is and where God stays. We are so glad man of God and woman of God for your coming together with your team. And on behalf of the fathers in this land. Represented by a number of them in this meeting. All the sons and daughters of this soil. Several of God's servants who are here. We warmly and home wholeheartedly welcome you once again to Nairobi, Kenya. It's a dream that has come to pass. And the other day when we had that conversation on the phone, I clarified and said everything is alright. We are set to receive you as a prophet. Once again, people of God, can we receive God's blessings in this house? Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Shortly, one of the fathers will be coming to receive you on this altar. But mine is just to let you know Kenya loves you. Kenya, ya kupenda. Kenya celebrates you. Kenya ya East Africa loves you. Africa kusa, tuwa and that's why we have a representation from the region. Ndiyo mana ya, ya, ya hiki wako Feel hapa. absolutely welcome. Sikia ya kwamba and man of God flow with the grace and the anointing na, that is at work in and through your life. Na na nema maisha yako. We are ready to receive from you. Tuko tayari kupokea kutoka as a vessel. Kama chombo. There are thousands and hundreds and millions that are watching this program right now. It was so powerful last night. We were following. And we were looking forward to today. So you are welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Please open your spirits wide. Let's receive as much as we can. So that you can see there are so many bishops so many apostles, prophets, and the fivefold graces in this uh, tabernacle. May I kindly request all the servants of God to be upstanding so that God's servant can see you. Nione watumishi wote wa Mungu wakiwa wamesimama juu ili naye mtumishi wa Mungu aliyekuja aweze kuwaona wote. Look at that Dr. Paul. Angalia Daktari Paulo Eneche uone walivyokuja watumishi wa Mungu. Look at that number. These are bishops, pastors, apostles, and all the fivefold graces that have come for the leadership meeting this morning. Daktari angalia hawa ni wavikundi vyote vitano wa injilisti mitume walimu na wachungaji waliokuja hapa kwa mkutano. And on their behalf. May I request Bishop Dr. Mark Karioki, the general overseer of deliverance churches worldwide to come and receive you officially. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say my life. Kila mtu sema maisha yangu. Somebody say my life. My life will never. Will never. Ever. Ever. Be the same again. Be the same again. Are you serious about that? Okay, if you are serious, put some seriousness and declare my life, my life will never, will never, ever, ever be the same again. Be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My family. I am my family. My finances. Pesa zangu. My church. Na will never, 
will never ever ever be the same again be the same again my businesses my businesses will never will never ever ever be the same again be the same again in Jesus name in Jesus name i am wired I am wired for this season for this season I am anointed I am anointed for this season for this season I have been called I have been called for this season for this season I am highly favored I am highly favored for this season for this season I am blessed I am blessed for this season for this season and my life and my life will never will never ever ever be the same again be the same again in jesus name in jesus name amen amina give the lord a shout of celebration come on celebrate jesus wapi shangwe wapi bigele gele jameni thank you you may be seated asante mnaweza mkapata viketi vyenu On behalf of the fathers in this nation I want to take this opportunity to welcome you servant of God. Kwa niaba ya baba wa mji huu tafadhali ningependa nikukaribisha mtumishi wa Mungu. Dr. Eneche and Mama. A Dr. Eneche na Mama to the land of Hakuna Matata. Karibuni kwa mji wa Hakuna Matata. This is the land of Hakuna Matata. Huyu ni mji wa Hakuna Matata. Because when Jesus is on the throne. Kwa sababu Yesu akiwa enzini. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. When God is on the throne. Mungu akiwa enzini. Hakuna Matata. There is no trouble. So in this land katika mji huu Jesus reigns. Yes watawala. We receive the grace that you have come with. Tunapokea neema ulioibeba. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. And for us Kenyans. Na kwa sisi wa Kenya. Remember this. Kumbuka haya. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Yesu akailia Yerusalemu because of their ignorance. Kwa sababu ya kutofahamu kwao. Because they did not know hawakujua the time of their visitation. Wakati wa kutembelewa kwao. And I want you to know, ningalitaka ujue. That this is our season. Huu ni msimu wetu. This is our time of visitation. Huu ni wakati wetu wa kutembelewa. We shall not walk in ignorance. Hatutatembea katika sitofahamu. We shall receive the word of the Lord. Tutalipokea neno la Bwana. Because we are gathered here. Kwa sababu tumekusanyika. Tulia finger like this. Weka kidole tu. And it is Kenya Kenya oh Kenya. Kenya Kenya oh Kenya. Hear the word of the Lord. Sikia neno la Bwana. Hear the word of the Lord. Sikia neno la Bwana. This is your season. Huu ni msimu wako. This is my season. Huu ni msimu wangu. You shall receive utapokea you shall receive utapokea you shall receive utapokea the grace of god neema ya mungu that is upon you now ambayo iko juu yako sasa in jesus name kwa jina la yesu kristo amen amina and because you are here kwa sababu kwa hapa and we receive that grace na tunaipokea ile neema we receive that grace tunapokea ile neema we receive it on behalf of this nation tunaipokea kwa niaba ya taifa so the people in migori receive this grace watu wa migori wanapokea ile neema the people in kilifi receive this grace watu wa kilifi wanapokea ile neema the people in tarime receive this grace watu wa tarakanidi wanapokea ile neema the people in bugoma receive this grace watu wa bugoma wanapokea ile neema the people in lamu receive this grace watu wa lamu wanapokea ile neema the people in garissa watu wa garissa the people in marsabit watu wa marsabit the people in Somo watu wa Kisumu receive this grace wapokea on name. behalf of this nation kwa niaba ya taifa and we have the confidence to declare na tuna ujasiri wa kutakaza that our nation will never be the same taifa again taifa letu atabaki vile tena in the name of Jesus Christ because the fathers kwa sababu wa baba have met wamekuja and the fathers na baba have declared wametangaza there shall be no disaster in this nation hakutakuwa na maafa katika taifa hilo there shall be no more disaster hapatakuwa na janga katika taifa letu in the name of Jesus Christ and we want to say tunataka tuseme to the man of god kwa mtumishi wa mungu pour it out wakati wote pour it out no mwaga mwaga pour it out mwaga yote when the vessels are empty kwa sababu vyombo viko tupu to receive tukiwa na utayari thank you so much asante sana may the lord richly bless you bwana akubariki i hope i've done what i was supposed to do nimefanya ile nilikuwa nifanye let us celebrate jesus for who he is and for being our ministry tukielekea yesu kwa yule aliye
Give the Lord a shout of praise. I believe God is set to visit us once again this morning. And our life shall never remain the same. Genesis 21 verse 1. Amwanzo. It says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Shall we rise up in one minute and ask the Lord, Father, visit me once again. As your word is about to comfort. As your servant is about to comfort. I ask for a visitation. In 30 seconds, lift up your voice and pray. Go ahead and declare. Lord, visit me today. I am set for the count. I am set for a visitation. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. With Jesus joy, can we welcome Dr. Mrs. Becky Paul and as he receives our father? Put your hands together for Jesus as we receive our mother tonight. This morning. In the throne room of the Lord, transform my life beyond recognition. Let the fire that burns in the throne room of the Lord transform my life beyond recognition. If you know that song, can we sing it together? We ask that not one of us will live here the same. Father, thank you. Because you are on the throne. And everything is under control. 
You are on the throne. Uko katika kiti cha enzi. And there is hakuna matata. Na hakuna matata. We give you the praise. Upasifa. We give you the honor. Nakupa heshima. We give you the adoration. Nakupa utukufu. Thank you, Master. Asante Bwana. In Jesus' precious name. Majina tukufu la Yesu. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Ke Bwana sifa. And before you sit down, please help me shake the hands of seven people. Tell them get ready for your next level. Wambie karibu katika kiwango kingine. Karibu katika kiwango kingine. Karibu katika Hold on and start that clip again. Karibu katika kiwango kingine. Hold on just pause. Pause on the clip. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. Pebo anasifa. Sadaka ya makofi. In Jesus' precious name. Waji inatukufu la Yesu. Please give the Lord a prayer. Take your seat. Be seated. Keti tafadhali. Come. When I prompt you, um, media, you can go. When I prompt you. Kuja kwenye media basi mneza mkafanya bile niluangu. I want to appreciate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for this opportunity. Napenda ni mshukuru buwana wa mabuwana mfalme wa falme kwa sababu ya nafasi hii. I want to appreciate absolutely the leadership and the fathers of the Church of Kenya. Kabisa, kina baba wa injili katika taifa la Kenya. Pokeni shukurani zangu. Before we came to this meeting, I already heard how we have been at work in all involvement. Kabla tukuja katika mkutano huu nilisikia kwamba vile ambavyo mlijitolea kina baba na wachungaji wote mkafanya kazi kwa sababu ya mkutano. There are some places where people try to identify from behind. Na kuna mahali kwingine watu wanafanya kazi nyuma hapa sisi. But when you are around you don't see them. Lakini ukiwa hauwaoni. But this case is completely different. Lakini mahali hapa ni tofauti sana. Everything a man sows is what he reaps. Kila kitu mtu anapanda ndicho ambacho anavuna. You sow the seed of honor. Ukipanda basi begu ya heshima. It is impossible not to repeat. Haiwezekani ya kwamba hautavuna heshima. I believe that the Lord will honor you. Namini ya kwamba Bwana atawaheshimu. And when I begin to preach out there are a few things I will say. Na wakati nitaza kubiri kuna mambo kadhaa nitasema. Because this level of neatness kwa sababu kiwango hii is going to produce some drastic things in this nation. Umoja kuna kitu ambacho kitazaliwa kizuri katika taifa hili. That will take the devil by surprise. Ambayo shetani akiisikia atashtuka tu. It will take the devil by surprise. Atashtuka tu. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I know many of you are familiar with our ministry. Ya kwamba wengi basi mwajua huduma yetu. But there is a few clips that I will just show you quickly. Lakini napenda tu niwaonyeshe sinema za dakika kwa muda tu. In order to pull up on our expectation. Ili ya kwamba basi muinue ile kiwango ya matarajio. I'll be talking on revival. Itongea kuhusu ufufuo. And God has given us some measure of some things for it for some years. Na ibwana kuna kiwango ambao ametupandisha katupo katika miaka imepita. So you could go ahead and then um, media. Kwa hivyo tafadhali media mtupe sinema zile za dakika kwa muda. The glory do. Pale basi ni glory do. This is an overflow of the main sanctuary. These are people sitting outside as the sanctuary is filled. There is another tent outside. Those are buses that brought people Hizo ni besi ambazo zinaleta watu pale kanisani. I need thee every hour Most gracious love No tender voice like thine Can please her for I need thee all. I need thee every hour. I need thee 
oh bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And Jesus broke every fetal. Jesus broke every fetal. Jesus broke every fetal. And he sets me free. And so I shout hallelujah. So I shout Can we all lift our hands and just appreciate the King of Kings to give you the praise? We give you the honor. Just wave the hands and let's appreciate him. We adore you. We magnify you. Only you could have done this. In you we live and move and have our being. Grief upon every one of us here today. And let not one person live here the same. In Jesus' name. Somebody say loud, Amen. Are we okay with interpretation? Or do I go without? I hear that we have a lot of literate people. I just wanted to be sure. Someone suggested yesterday that it's possible to go on. Is there anybody who will not understand without interpretation? Tunauliza, kuna mtu ambaye akiongea, aski angiataka tutumie kiswahili, Ama mnataka ni keti. <laughs> what did he say? They want. We should go ahead. Or is he making a point for himself? <laughs> he should sit down. Who said no? He should go on. All right. Even if it's one person that needs interpretation, let's go. If it's one person, Amen. that's right. All right. Father, thank you for your word. We give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2 and in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And clothing tongues like as of fire. And, and, it, and they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. 
I'm speaking very quickly on the price of revival. The price of the Gar cost of revival. Garama kiliambacho tutalipa kwa sababu ya ufufu. Our understanding, our, our, our expectation is to understand, or objective, is to understand what it entails to experience revival. Matarejiyo yetu ni kuelewa kile ambacho toitaji kwa sababu kupata ufufu. Whether it is personal revival, ama iwe ni ufufu wa binafsi, family revival, ama iwe ni ufufu wa kifamilia, revival in a ministry, ufufu wa kama huduma, revival in a nation, ufufu wa katika ataifa, when I'm talking about revival, I'm talking about the explosion of the presence of God. The explosion of the power of God. The explosion of the glory of God. That translates into the explosion of multitudes. In salvation. salvation. Katika wakovu, in discipleship, katika ile ukfunzi, in establishment, na katika kunawirishwa, the explosion of everything, mulipuko wa kila kitu, the explosion of supernatural supplies, mulipuko basi wa kusaidi wa kiungu, where things happen at the frequency of God. Hali ambapo mamba ya tendeka katika njia kiungu. That structure you saw just now was built debt free. Cost millions upon millions of dollars. The roof alone is in millions of dollars. It's like a roof that covers three foot three football fields. From the, from one big, from this end to the other end is 294 meters. 274 meters. A football field is 90 meters. Basi ile kucheza kiwanja ni meter tisini. Debt free, no struggle, no stress, nothing. Akuna kitu tulikopa subwana na banki. Because the move of the power of God also goes hand in hand with the move of the provision of God. Supernatural power is connected to supernatural supplies. So we are, we are looking at what it takes. What do we do to experience Revival. And one thing that is important to note is that wherever you are in life, there is still a level higher. I have, I have, I, I am, I am fully convinced and aware. That for my life and ministry, there are dimensions and realms I have seen in the realm of the spirit that I have not seen in the physical. That my heart is yearning and passionate and hungry for. So wherever we are in life, there is still a step higher. And there is still a step higher. Because the Bible says the path of the just is a shining light. That shineth more and more. Until the perfect day. I am convinced. That until we see Jesus face to face. There is still a step more. There is still a level more. The Bible said it is only when we see him. That we shall finally be as he is. So until we sight him. There is something more to see. There is a realm more to step into. There is a dimension more to step into. And I stand here by an apostolic and a prophetic mantle. And I decree that you are stepping there after now. What is the next level for your life? What is the next realm for your ministry? No devil shall stop you. I say no devil shall stop you. I don't know the time you are or the season you are. But if Abraham can step into the first chapter at age 75 and Moses can step into the assignment at age 80 and Caleb can step into the, his possession 
at age 85 I announce to you today whatever be your level your face or your age or position you are stepping into something after this conference you believe that shout the Lord is amen that is why I say you should tell somebody get ready for your next level. Tell somebody again get ready for that next level. Please give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. If there are already 4,000 churches in a year it can become 8,000 churches. Hey! hey! without a doubt I know that something is about to explode in Kenya having seen this background it is important to note that the move of God is very rare on the earth today because those who are willing to pay the price are few we live in a generation where people want to get something for nothing instant tea, instant coffee instant this, instant that microwave, microwave everything including microwave anointing all the fathers you see here, many of them and passed through a process before they went they became what they, what they are today there are people who wake up today and want to become something today and suddenly you begin to see things and you are wondering where did, when did this one start and one young man came to visit me in the office the other day and um, he, 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 my yes, Personal assistant told me, so, so and so person is coming to see me. And he came to me with a very big title. Who is your father in the Lord? He couldn't tell me. How did you come up? He couldn't really tell me. When did you give your life to Christ? Five years ago. I say you are a baby in the Lord. You are, a, you are kindergarten. This big title is too much for you. You don't carry elephant head and put on goat neck. <laughs> hey! Hey! You just want to collapse the goat for nothing. It is not wired to carry that size. So many, many want to become something suddenly. They don't want to pass through any process. But I heard from Catherine Kuhlman that whatever you want in life is possible. It depends on how badly you want it. And I add, whatever you want in life is possible. It depends on your willingness to pay the price. Whatever realm, whatever realm you want to step into is possible. Any result you want to see is possible. It is depending on your willingness to pay the price. There can be no value without price whatever has value has a price and if you are able to, ready to release the price you get the value I believe that somebody is going to get the value this morning let's go very quickly what is the price number one what, do we, what is the first thing Number one is sensitivity to divine timing. God servant just now almost entered into my note. Sensitivity to divine timing. We know that God is the God of times and seasons. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and in verse 1. The Bible said to every 
thing there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. If there is a purpose, there is a time for it. If there is a, a purpose move of God, there is a schedule for it. So at the same time that Azusa Street Revival was happening in California in 1904. At that same time, at that same year, in 1904, the Welsh Revival was happening in Wales in, in, in the United Kingdom. At, at two different places at the same time. Two different locations at the same time. But the timing was perfect. The people didn't need to meet each other. But something was exploding here. And something was exploding there. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. It says he makes all things beautiful. In his time. When purpose. Marries season. Inaolewa na majira. Beauty is delivered. Urembo waonekana. There is a, when there is a marriage of purpose. Wakati kunandoa kati ya kusudi. And season. Na majira. Beauty is delivered. Urembo unazaliwa. There are people who know purpose, but they don't know season. Kuna watu anajua kusudi, lakini wajui majira. There are those who have a mentality of season, but they don't understand purpose. Kuna wale wanakili za majira, lakini hawaila kusudi. But the two must marry together. Lakini zote lazima ziowane. The Bible said concerning Sarah, Mandiko asema kumusu Sarah, at the appointed time, wakati wake ulipofika, I will visit you. Nita kutembele. So divine visitation, the best waki ungu, has appointed timing. Una wakati wake. In Genesis 18 verse 14, mwanzo kumina nani, at the appointed time, katika wakati wake, I will return Genesis 18 14. At the appointed time, I will return and visit Sarah. At the appointed time, at the appointed time, in Job chapter 40, so divine, so divine visitations are time sensitive. They are time sensitive. Read that again. Is there anything too hard for God? Genesis. 1814, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Divine visitations follow divine timing. Divine visitations are time sensitive. They are time sensitive. They are time sensitive. When Job was in affliction and he was expecting a change in Job chapter 14 verse 14 he tied it to time. He tied it to a timing. He said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. When it is time, change must come. Hey, I said, when it is time, change must come. Let me say it like this. When it is season, it is easy. Inawezekana. When it is season, wakati ni majira, it is easy. Basi inawezekana kwa uraisi. Apart from the abnormal rainfall that is happening, the normal schedule for rain. Wakati wa mvua ukifika, you don't need to pray for rain. Uhitaji kuombea mvua. It falls because it is season. Inakuja maana ni majira yake. Many people labor outside season. Watu wengi wanafanya kazi nje ya majira yao. So it is difficult. Kwa hivyo sasa inakuwa ni gumu. When season arrives, they are sleeping. Majira yakifika wanalala. Is God speaking to somebody? Before I came here, I am aware that there is a season upon Kenya. That flood in the physical is an exaggeration, a destructive opposite of what is about to happen in the realm of the spirit. There is a flood of revival that is hitting the nation that will check the devil back to hell. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. 
In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Take us cook tattoo. Many of us have seen visions and revelations. God showed you said some things in time to come. But the Bible says that vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, he shall speak and not lie. Though he tarry, wait for it. Because it shall surely come to pass. The vision, the revelation, the prophecy is for an appointed time. Even Jesus Christ could not come until it was time. It's alright. Sour. As he prayed, the, the spirit fell on them. Mm. Even Jesus, at the Christ Jesus, as master of the universe as he was, was time restricted. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 2 He said in the fullness of time Go to verse 3 And I'm starting with tattoo Alright, let's look at verse 1 and 2 Now I say that the hair as long as it's a child Different not from his servant Okay, verse 4 but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. So there was a fullness of timing. That was what made me to understand the barrenness of Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth was to born a child that was to be the forerunner of the Messiah. And that child has to be born close to the time that the Messiah will be born. So John the Baptist was not permitted to be born until a certain time so that the time can coincide to the time when the Messiah is about to come. So it is not every delay that is of the devil. I hear. Hey! Hey! Not every delay that is of the devil. There are things that are time connected. A miracle that is tied to time may not happen until that time arrives. I prophesy to somebody here today. Your season is here. And the delay is over. Once in a while, God may alter the time. Adjust timing based on certain conditions. For example, in the wedding in Cana of Galilee, they have no wine. Say, woman, my time has not come. That is, between me and my father, there is a time set for miracles to begin. From the last time I heard from him, he has not changed that time. So don't push me to do anything before time. Then Mary broke something. He, she ignored what she, he said and told the servants, Whatsoever he say unto you, do it. When the father heard that there are some people ready to do anything to see results, he whispered to the son, even though the last time we spoke, I said it was not yet time. But now that the people are ready to do anything, it is time now. Your obedience can accelerate manifestation. If you are ready to obey God and, and become very desperate and you tell God I am ready to do anything just let me know what you want me to do then he will tell you even though I was planning for it for next year I have now adjusted the time it can happen now hey! 
I believe that there is somebody here that God is about to speed up. Somebody say speed up. God is about to speed up. Certain manifestations. Certain expectations in your life at the frequency of obedience. Shout the loudest. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Help me tell people around you. Tell them God is speeding up something. He's speeding up something. He's speeding up something. He's speeding up something. Yes, sir. Yes. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those who were calculating your moves, very soon they shall be taken by surprise. Because suddenly, you move faster. You move faster. You move faster than their expectation. You change position faster. Somebody shout glory! Yes, sir. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Katie, to Kimbia to Fika Wakatuetu. You know, you know that if I stop here, we have already over preached. You just stand up and just go and tell God, tell me whatever you want me to do, I'm ready. Uh, just I, I, I want I want I want some speed. I want some manifestation speeded up. Just let me know whatever you want me to do. <laughs> and that was what happened. So the apostles could not see the release of the Pentecostal revival until when the day of Pentecost was fully come. There is a fullness to timing. The day did not partially come. Today is 17th. Of, 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 of me, right? 1 a.m. This morning is 17th of May. But has the day fully come? <laughs> it's not the day one a.m., two a.m. is 17th of May. 4 a.m. is 17th of May. But where, for as long as we haven't seen the sun, it is not yet fully day. There are people who want to just, 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 just one go their way into things. Outside fullness. An outside obedience. That was what happened to Moses. When Moses knew that God would use him to deliver Israel from Egypt, he went 40 years earlier. He went 40 years earlier. Because Philip told us that when he came to talk to his brethren, when Philip was talking in no, Stephen, who was turned to death. But Stephen, when he was talking in Acts chapter 7, he said he thought his brethren would have understood that by him God will deliver them. But he understood not. Which means he already knew from God 40 years ago that he was going to deliver Israel. But he went 40 years earlier. He went before the fullness of time. And then he jammed frustration. And turned his back on the call completely. And went to the wilderness for 40 years. When God began to call him back to the call, he gave all my rubbish. I'm not going again. I tried before. Listen. Most visions that fail may not because may not be because the vision is not authentic. But because the timing was not right. Timing was not right. Process was not right. Procedure was not right. Because even if God wants you to deliver Israel from Egypt, it is not by killing Egyptians one by one. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about this another day. On, on my way coming, I was thinking, I'm just thinking, what is 
restraining me now is, is, shed, is just to find a schedule that we will sit down and talk about an East African Ministers Conference. East Africa Ministers Conference to be held in Kenya here. Find a Kenya up. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Yes, sir. Because an explosion is about to happen. It's, it's happening in this season. So people have people have the wrong approach, the wrong procedure, what to find the wrong timing now, you with the right vision. Now, and at times, even with the wrong location. So they experience total frustration. And the devil told them, God did not call you. God did not send you. You sent yourself. But that devil is a liar. The time shall be corrected. It was corrected for Moses. The time shall be corrected. The approach shall be corrected. The procedure shall be corrected. The process shall be corrected. And the vision shall come to pass. Somebody shall the Lord and say amen. Say my amen. Help me tell three people around you. Tell them that vision must come to pass. 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 Give the Lord a bigger club and a shout of praise. As you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Now, Sasa. Before we go forward, there are two challenges with timing that make people not to see the manifestation of God. Number one challenge is the lack of discernment of the time. Bishop told us just now because Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said, I wanted to deliver you but you don't know the time of your visitation. The second problem of, that people have with timing is that they know the time. They have a, sen a sense of the timing but they fail to do the right thing at the right time. Let me tell you what I mean. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were not sleeping at home. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were not in compromise somewhere. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were not chasing anything that had nothing to do with their life's assignment. They were all in one accord. In one place at the upper room. The challenge of most people is that the day came but they were not in the upper room. The day of Pentecost did not meet them in the upper room. The day of Pentecost did not meet them at the prayer altar. The time for visitation came. But the, the place they should be and the things they should be doing, they were not there. So the time came and the time passed. And they will be complaining, but God you said, this is the time. You showed me clearly that this is the time when this thing should happen. And God said, yes, it was the time. But were you in the upper room? It was time, but were you with one accord? I will deal with that shortly. Beloved brothers and sisters, lift your hands and say, Father, may your time of visitation never meet me somewhere else. Say, Father, may your day of visitation meet me in the party in the upper room. May your day of visitation meet me in the party where I am meant to be. Take your seat. Let me, let me, let me give you two examples. One day I was preaching in one of our locations in Nigeria. In the eastern part of the country. And... Um, before the service finished, somebody, mm -hmm. a, young, 
young lady, I think, stood up, carried her back, and started going. Just, you know the way people maybe they have an appointment or something. Just carried her back and started going. And I told her, you, you go in there. Can you please come back? Rudy. Service will soon be over. Service will soon be over. Don't ever leave service before it is over. And sure you share the grace. So you don't share this grace. That, so she, she returned back and sat down. Within the next five minutes, the Lord gave me a prophetic word about a situation, about a challenge somewhere, about someone that had had demonic altars work against her, described in detail including the sacrifice that was done literally like an animal slain, killed over the person's head with blood and so forth detail the same person that was going out now that was her word she ran forward and said I'm the one so the devil was pushing her out when her deliverance was just about to happen The devil does not mind the vision you have. As long as he can give you another engagement. When the vision is to be fulfilled. He just engages you. He just commits you. Am I communicating at all? Yes, sir. He just makes a phone call to be coming. When God is about to say something. There are times my wife says, she said, excuse me, sir. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, I'm Something is coming. She knows. When I do, I do like this, she knows. Because there is a transmission happening. And I don't want it interrupted. I was preaching in the university campus. And during the time of healing and deliverance and miracles, I gave a precise word about a particular person, a particular affliction, situation. Everybody began to look like this. So I asked, why, why are we were looking around? They say we know the person. It doesn't mean service. But he's not here today. The word was so specific that they knew the person that owned the word. They began to look like this. I announce to you today you were with me in that meeting ABU Zaria Congo campus they began to look like this I prophesy to you today you will not miss your visitation you will not miss your visitation you will not miss your visitation, you miss your visitation. lift your hands and say father help me to be sensitive to your timing and to do the right thing at the right time in the name of Jesus please I want you to help me prophesy to five people you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time yes sir I will not miss my visitation you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it when it is time you will not miss it Give the Lord a big clap and a lot of shout of praise. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Sensitivity to divine timing. Number two, desperation in prayer. If revival will happen, somebody will be desperate in prayer. For more than 15 years, maybe 20 years now, day one, two, three of every month, we have a group of people every opening of the month First, second, third. Actually, the whole of the prayer department will taste nothing until those three days are over. Every month. 
kila mwezi. If you have a covenant with food, kama wewe una maagano na chakula ugali, then don't join that department. Basi usiingie pale katika hiyo maombi. Haya. You know because there are people with covenant with food. Yes, they, they are in agreement with food. Labda una magano na ugali. If you if you uh, that, that is they, they can do anything but they must eat. Unaweza ukaenda mpaka mbali ukakule. Are you hearing what I'm saying yet? Unaelewa kile nasema? For as soon as Zion travel. Otokumbi. He brought forth children. I'm not talking of prayer you did and it has ended. You prayed. You are praying. You will continue to pray for as long as there is breath in your nostrils. He said pray without season. What do you do without season? Breathing. Pray like you breathe. I hear Yes, sir. Let prayer be your life wire. What? Pray like you breathe. Um, Pray without season. Um, For as soon as Zion traveled, um, he brought forth children. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. They were in the upper room. They were in the upper room. They were not playing. They were not in the supper room. Ha <laughs> They were in the upper room. And they were praying. We had a program in in New York last year. And, and I told them we are going to do seven hours in God's presence. Nobody will shift position. Eventually we did one hour more. And, and did eight hours. hours. One of the bishops, that many people were there. Jonathan Shortiswas was there. Bishop George Bloomer was there. And several of them. And the bishop said to me, Keeping Americans for eight hours. Kuweka wa Amerika wa mbema samana. In one place. Mali pamoja. No tea. Hakuna chai. No break. Hakuna break. No cakes. Hakuna bukate. He said it is a bigger miracle than raising the dead. Asema ni mujiza mku. Kuliko kinua wafu. He said, if you had raised the dead, it's smaller. It's a less miracle than keeping these people in one place. Nobody going out. Go we are praying. We are worshiping. Healing is happening. Prayer is going on. What is going on? Eight hours nonstop. In New York. New York. Not in Africa. See Africa. That is a challenge. The challenge. The, the, the labor that brought the church forth. William J. Seymour prayed for five hours every day for five years. When he went to God and he said, God, why am I not seeing what you said I will see? God said, increase your prayer. He increased it by two more hours. Seven hours every day for two more years. Then bam! Bang! Azusa Street Revival. Millions upon millions. Almost a billion or more now around the world are Pentecostals. Because of one revival. Am I communicating now? Yes, sir. Today, the average preacher, especially in America, 15 minutes is too much. Can prepare someone, prepare everything, scream, shout. But this is the way I look at it. I don't care what you can preach. If it doesn't have the power back up, it is like carrying bullet AK-47 with your hand and throw it. It can do no damage. There is a, a machine power that must push out that same bullet. Hey! 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 In order to cause the necessary devastation in the kingdom of darkness. I believe something is happening for somebody here. You are the one shout the Lord and say amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, I am ready. I receive an impartation of the spirit of prayer. I receive it now. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. John Wesley said when God wants to do, do 
get great things done. He sets his praying men praying. If he wants to get great things done, he sets his praying men praying. He also said again that God does nothing except in answer to prayer. God does nothing except in answer to prayer. Charles G. Finney said, the unutterable gushings of my heart they are the secret of my ministry the groanings of the heart they are the secret of my ministry my dear brethren what do you want if we want normal church work that is majorly impactless on the kingdom of darkness it can happen normally but if we need that drastic move of God, drastic revival, drastic manifestation, weird things that happen can't be explained, then we are in need of prayer. One woman, one lady came to our church. She was invited because she had the cervical condition. She was to be, to be flown to Europe. She had worn several neck braces. Her neck will make clicking, clicking sounds. <laughs> like 200-300 times in one day. In pain. She was referred to our church. She was prayed for. The neck was healed. The noise disappeared. The sound disappeared. The need to go to Europe was cancelled. She brought dollars in an envelope and gave to me. Say, so I came to appreciate you for this healing that happened to me. I said to her, I am not the healer. If you gave me the offering and I collect it, it means I was the one who healed you. There is someone who healed you. God healed you in the name of Jesus. I do the same when somebody gives me a seed, uh, cancer, uh, kidney failure. Um, I want to give you this seed for my healing. I say I can't touch it. Because if I carry the seed, you have put me under pressure to ensure the healing happens. <laughs> and it's either you are healed or I refund you your money. So I, I, I want <laughs> Oh, so I want you to give the offering to the one who heals you, who can heal you. So, so this woman, he said, I, I came to appreciate you for the healing. I said, no. Take the money to the one who healed you. Take it to church, put it in the offering to God. So she went and did it. She got back home opened her bag and saw the same money back in her envelope. The same envelope, the same money, the same amount. So when she told me, I told them, I said, when I said to her, I will not collect money for healing you, God said, me too. <laughs> Freely you have received freely gift. So the money, I my servant say you will not touch it. Me too, I refund it back to him. But God did his own. God did his own is a very very, very terrific way. Envelope disappeared from the offering. Money disappeared, found back in her bag. I can go on and on with those kind of strange things. What do you want? We need. This prayer fire. Moto wa maombi. Moto. We need this desperation in prayer. Taji kwa maombi. Desperation in prayer. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. I read that already. Second Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Paul the apostle said. Praying always. With all prayer. And supplication. In the spirit. What do you want? Let me go to point number three. Please take your seat. Do we want revival? First, sensitivity to divine timing. Second, desperation in prayer. Number three, 
love and unity in the spirit. Upendo na umoja katika roho. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Matendo ya mitume 2 1. They were all wote with one accord. Kama mali pamoja. In one place katika umoja. That was what happened hiyo ndio ilitendeka. In Psalm 133 verse 1. Zaburi 100. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed. Even Aaron's bed that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Haman and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessed even life forevermore. One accord. Umoja. In Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. Mwanzo kumi na moja. The Bible says the people is one. Mwanzo kumi na moja. And this they began to do. Kanza kufanya kitu. And nothing can be resisted them. Kuna kitu waneza kitu. Nothing can be restrained from them. Kuna kitu waneza nyimu. Which they have imagined to do. Bayo umesema watafanya. Don't forget this. If we are indivisible, we become irresistible. If we cannot be divided, we cannot be resisted. If we are indivisible, we are irresistible. We are unstoppable. We are indomitable. That is why I'm excited. When I saw the clip of the fathers all sitting together and making declaration, I said, This is what it should be, and this is how it should be. There is no competition, it is completion. There is, is, we are not in a competition. We are in a completion. You are not competing with me. You are completing me. Completing my assignment. Completing my life's assignment. Somebody shout the loudest. Amen. Amen. Take your seat. Katie. Bishop Kephas, you know what happened in the healing revival? That was one of the things that made it to die finally. You build a tent of when our robots got a tent of 50,000 sit, I think, 10,000, one of the healing evangelists went and measured the tent and came and increased his own length so that it can be said that he had the larger length. Tent. This man was so anointed. He will carry cripples and throw them on his shoulder. They will land and be walking. A lot of competition and contention. Before you could say, he came to one town to, to start a church. A town of a, a pastor that he had always ministered with and ministered for. And he came and said he wants to start a church. And the pastor said, this is no protocol. You come here. I give you pulpit, I give you everything, I do everything for you. And then you come now and say you want to start church right here. Who do you think will be the members of the church? You are starting. You, do you, know, you can't believe what he said. He said your members, your members. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. He said it's your people, you, you. And he truly came and planted the church right there. Ah. No future. That guy could not last. Ministry ended. Physical life ended. Everything ended. Tens competition is the frustration of the unction. Every time your mental mode is that you are contending and competing with somebody, you are suffocating the unction that you are meant to be walking in. Your assignment is not to create impression. It is to give expression. 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 To what whatever God has put inside you. Give it expression. So you don't weary your life. They crave to make impression. Give expression. Don't struggle to create impression. When you continue to struggle to create impression, 
focus on giving expression your, your outcome is frustration this is east africa where there are elephants everywhere. Have you ever gone to the zoo or Say gone zoo. anywhere in the, by accident? And, and the car. space was too little until two elephants jammed. The jungle is too wide for two elephants not to find roads to pass. Am I communicating at all? Yes, sir. The sky is too wide for two birds to clash in the air. In Kenya here, what's the population of Kenya? What was the population of Kenya? Basi, what in Wanga Pi Kenya? 50 million, 54 million. Million is sitting, million is sitting, million is sitting. If we say, okay, let us give the tithe of the land to God. That is 5.4 million. 4.4 million. What to 5.4? So we can have at least a hundred churches. That can be 54,000 members. No challenge. Bila kushindana na kupigana na kukorofana. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Don't struggle to outdo anybody. Usitake kushindana na wachungaji wenzako. Outdo yourself. Kishinde mwenyewe kila siku. Hey! Just just outdo your last level. Kishinde mwenyewe. Defeat your last achievement. Pika mbio na. Just keep on going. Leo. Don't struggle to outshine anybody. Usishinde mtu wote. And never be found. Na usikapatikane where anybody is being destroyed. Mahali mtu anamalizwa na kuondolewa. Siwe pale. This is a pastor's conference, and I'll tell you the truth. One day, some group of uh, pastors like ourselves, they came together and invited me. And they said, um, I'd like us to just fellowship together, let's be together. Correct. Let's go around and see if we can do ministers' conference, touch lives. Excellent. Then before you know it, they began to bring one person after another. Oh, Benihin, because of money, he is shining. If I have the money of Benihin, I will also have the same impact. They took another person. I carried my Bible and stood up. So you are in the wrong place. This is not the assembly you belong. I carried. You mean with all the assignment I have in my with my life to do, I should sit down and carry one pastor another and talk about this and talk about that. I don't have such a time. Now, all those people that talk like that, they are nowhere today. Nothing, nothing to write about. Nothing, nothing. Nothing means nothing. 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 Wish your fellow pastor well. This is one of the prayers I pray for pastors. One of the prayers I prayed. Say, Father, that your son, everything you had in mind before you created him,